una gira de audio. ¿Cuándo la ventaja en la camisa, pues? La camisa. Uh, are you live now? You say not appropriate to the comment. You say not appropriate to the comment. Yeah, you don't have to watch. When you do that, you don't have to watch. Those uh, comments, those uh, ads. ads. Okay. Uh, are you live now? Okay. Yeah, you okay. You. All right. No. No. Okay. Uh, welcome to my channel, everybody. This is the live video of the month of August. Today we're gonna be talking about this DD12 transmission. We're gonna do and replace the split pin, doing some service to it. That's a common service that you are you need to do to DD12 after many miles or years of use. Um, si ustedes están viendo este video y desean que yo haga un video en español uh, de la misma manera para uh, una reparación de la transmisión de T12 automática de los camiones Cascadia, uh, dejen sus comentarios. Eh, de esa manera yo puedo saber si ustedes desean eso y qué es lo que desean además para poder hacer videos en vivo o videos regulares explicándole a uh, cualquier otro clase de problemas o soluciones a estas uh, estas máquinas, estos uh, eh, dispositivos que están tan complicados el día de hoy. Um, well, um, here uh, we're going to be explaining on how to replace the uh, split pin on this um, transmission. I already did a video explaining how to do it, but in this case, I want to do it step by step. That's the reason why I'm doing this live video. Um, if you have any questions, any comment, anything to add, you can ask it and my boy here, Gio, he is going to uh, answer all your questions and or send the questions to me and uh, I will answer it to you. So uh, English or Spanish is fine. So he speaks both just too. So um, we'll be fine any language, uh, any questions or anything to add, you can do it in the comment section. Um, first of all, it's very important. And if you want to do this service to this transmission, you need to uh, remove the transmission from the truck. There is no way you are going to service a little truck transmission in the chassis. It has to be removed because the limitation of room is one of the biggest factor why this cannot be performed in the uh, in the frame. Uh, once you remove it, of course, you're gonna have it in a position when it's, yeah, where it's easy to service and uh, everything is gonna be a little accessible. Um, also, it's very important that you can do this as a prevention or as a repair. For any reason, you have a truck that is not failing, anything, um, not, th there is no problem at all, but you wanna do this, you can do it because it can prevent future problems. But if you are doing this as a repair, it will be the solution to your problem, especially if you're missing shifting when you're driving. Um, in my other video, I explained the details why this has to be replaced. So if you wanna see my other video, you're gonna see more details. In this case, we're gonna go straight and replacing this because we're gonna take a little time to do it. So the split pin is located behind the transmission control unit. This is a transmission control unit for the DT12. So to access this, we have to remove the control unit. For that, we need to remove all these harness, all these hoses, and the bolts that are holding it. I'm going to go step by step so you know what you have to do first. And uh, for that, we're going to start disconnecting the harness. In this case, we're gonna be using a small screwdriver like this one to disconnect the plugs right here. This is the clutch actuator plug. Pretty easy. Once you get it off, it's gonna look like this. Then we have all these zip ties and we need to remove. Be careful not to cut the cable because that is gonna be a big problem if you do. Yeah, it's working. All right. Now we have to disconnect the main the main T 
TCEM plug. Um, this is the one that sends all the signal to the sensors and everything. This right here is the one that comes from the cabin. Um, this is the control one, the one that comes from the CPC and the engine, and this is the one that goes to the sensors, shifting, and everything. So for that, we are going to pull this one. But as you can see, this one is hard to move. It doesn't, it should be easy to move, but in this case, super hard. The reason why is because it has a lot of dirt inside. So if you pull it, if you push it too hard, you're gonna break the clips inside. So what you have to do is grab a screwdriver, a larger one, and press it right here, come closer here. You see these tabs over here? These tabs, you have to press them down like this. See? And see how this is moving the same time I am moving the tabs. What we're doing is releasing the lock, and you have to do it slowly. And once you do it, it's gonna be easier. See, come this way so you can see right here the full motion. See how this is moving. You have to be careful with this because this is plastic, so it can easily be break broken. So now. We just can pull it like this, and then it's out. These are the clips, then secure the log right here. And that is what uh, it needs to be released from here. But the dirt inside makes it so hard to remove. And if you keep on pushing it or pulling it too hard, there is a little tears in, in here, and they break. So it's going to be harder. And it's gonna be a problem later because not only you have to replace the plug, it's gonna take more time and it's gonna cost you a little money. So now the hardness can be uh, put in a side like this. And we have more room here. All these zip ties gotta be removed because we are going to replace them with new ones. Now, we have to work on the rear part. In this area, we have the pressure sensor. This sensor right here is the one reads the pressure from the air tank. Right here, you wanna see if the transmission has air or not. This is the sensor that determines that. So to remove that, we're gonna need a 30 millimeter wrench to remove the nut right here, the, the fitting, this one right here, and to the left. Pretty easy. And remember, to disconnect the sensor. This has two crusher washers, one right here and one right here. Be sure to don't miss them. But if you miss them anyway, they're new on the kit, but just be sure to keep them in case something happens. And the last part to do with the components is to remove these lines over here. These two lines are for the range selection. These lines go all the way to the back right here for the range of the transmission. For that, we are going to use three quarter wrench. We wanna remove the bottom one freeze, and then we wanna remove the top one. They are pretty easy to remove, but very hard to move by hand because they have opposition by the seals and plastic Then they have. So you may have to take a little time to remove them. If you have a small three quarter wrench will be convenient. This one is making pressure right here. See this cable? So we are going to cut that zip tie so we have more room to play with the hose.
see. Now we remove the top one. These two hoses, if it's not possible, then you can swap the position of them because they are not going to fit. They have only one position. There are pre-made hoses in one position only. So just remember that there is no way. And if you do, you're gonna see something weird about it. Anyway, now then we have them on the side. We have the TCM, the whole unit, completely ready to remove. To remove it, we have to remove all these bigger bolts right here. These are E12. Hey, snap point is coming earlier today. Oh. Show them snap point coming early. You don't usually come at this time, but it's looking for someone to pay, I suppose. Okay, so E12, here we have a E12 socket. It looks like this. It has to fit nicely. If it's loose in it, don't use it because you can have some serious problems and removing this is going to be a, ba a very difficult process. I'm gonna use an impact gun in this case, but sometimes these are very tight to remove. So let's see if we are able to remove them with the impact gun. They get stuck. So the reason why they get like this is because they have lock tie in them. And if you happen to have this problem, then you are removing the the bolt and the bolt doesn't rotate anymore with the impact gun. Don't uh, worry about it. It is just the lock tight and it is in the thread bolt. And that is the reason why this one doesn't move. So for that, we need to use a ratchet, but we're gonna continue on removing the other bolts. This one came out. See, there's a little block tie on this one, the green part. That's the lock tie. That's the reason why it's hard to remove. Um, but some of them have more than others, and that's the reason why they're harder to remove. Mm. And this one, this one. See, this one. Uh, in a year, yeah. Yeah. Tie two. Okay, see, this one has more lock tie on it. So these two cannot be removed with a gun. Let's see this. Right. Same way. See, we have some dust of the cloche. Yeah. See, so we only need to remove these three right here. Uh, if you remove all the balls, don't worry, it doesn't have a spring tension. It's not spring loaded, so if you remove it, it won't be it won't be a problem. So you looking for someone? Are you looking for someone? Yes, you. Oh me? I have a big bill for you. Oh come on. How's that? Let me see. Let me see that. That's not yours. Oh then then it's not me. That was okay about him, not me. Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> you making a uh, motion picture? A motion picture, yes. Uh, uh, we are live, uh, really. we are live, you know. Nice. Yeah. I, I, I'm what pretty. Are you doing today? Uh, we're replacing the split pin on this one. Yeah. 
good for you guys. Yeah. Where's the rest of the kids? Under uh, trucks? Uh, no, right. they just left. Uh, probably. <laughs> pulled in, right? Yeah. Because that's the way it goes. But this guy, he, he sell me the money. So that's, that's how that's you do that. That's the smart way. So that way you, you, know, huh? you don't take extra, don't right? Truck, right? <laughs> <laughs> if I go in there, I'm going to have to get more tools. That's it. All right, so as I was saying, we have three balls left. Uh, if we remove the last one here, then it's putting pressure to the whole assembly. Don't worry, it won't push back because it is not a spring tension here. So we can remove them and it, it, nothing will happen. So. Okay. So. Now, we need to manually remove these two because the impact gun is not able to remove them. And we can use the as a bigger impact gun, but it's not right. See, um, it's a little hard to remove. But if you feel it, then it's like a super tight to remove. Don't worry, it's just the lock tie. Uh, it feels like it's stripping the thread, but it is not. It is just the way it feels like. We gotta make sure it's that certain. Um, there's sometimes they, they'll be taking this like a, a 10. The what? The, the size of it. Oh, the E12. This yeah, is. Gotta make sure it's yeah, it's a E12. Yeah, you remember that. It has to be E12. You cannot use a bigger one and a smaller one, of course, won't fit. But a, big, a bigger one will fit. And if you use a bigger one, it's gonna strip the ball. And if you strip it, this process is going to be super hard and it's going to be super difficult to repair it. That's a face of a sad guy. Yeah, it's a face of paying some money on tools then probably you don't use. So. Saludos Argentina. Ah, saludos. Saludos, Argentina. A boludo. A boludo. Okay. All right, the last one. So now this one is free. You gotta be free like this. Make sure that it moves. If it doesn't move, that means there is something else holding it. So now what you have to do. Move it up and push it back. I mean, pull it back. And then you have the the whole unit here. This is the way it looks from the inside. So, moment we're gonna put it on the side. Okay. So this is the shifting mechanism of the transmission, the T12 transmission. The problem. On this transmission, when the shift is not uh, is not uh, stay steady in one gear or it's not going into gear, it goes to neutral randomly with no warning because of the pin right here. The pin, see, is stuck. This pin right here. This pin should be easy to rem to move, and it is not. <laughs> I cannot get it out. So the problem here is in the pin. <clears throat> yeah, super stuck. The pin is stuck in there, and the transmission doesn't know the position of the of, of the gears because uh, uh, the pin doesn't move with the with the transmission with the transmission mechanism on with the rail then determines the position of this. So let me show you this. Yeah, replace that. Okay, see that. Uh, tiene que cambiar este. Si tiene el mismo problema, cambia este. Ese es el mismo problema. Okay. So what happened here is when the transmission is working inside here, which we're gonna see in a bit, when I remove this part because uh, when I, we had to do all that. Um, this um, pin gets pushed by the rail, then it's inside, then pushes the pin up, and 
and when the pull, when the pin needs to be pulled in, push in, there is this spring tension, and this is the sensor right here. The sensor is this one, and it has a spring tension. It's a spring loaded. It goes back, but this the tension on this pin on this sensor is not enough to push this pin back. So it is enough to push it with a specific force, but if it's stuck in the position that it is, then I cannot even move it with my hand, this spring is not gonna be able to push it. So that's the reason why when you are shi uh, shifting gears, this pin is stuck in one position because it is not letting this sensor right here, the, the, the tension of the sensor move the pin. And that's when you starting to get in those problems like neutral when you're driving or you put it onto gear, it goes to neutral and it's playing neutral to drive, neutral to drive, neutral to reverse, neutral to reverse, and so on until finally it goes into gear because until finally this thing moves. So for this, because it is stuck in one position, we need to grab a pair of players to remove it. So here we have this, and because it's a stuck, I have to do this. Then and there we have it. This is the way pins look, the pin looks like. Stuck in position is the major problem. So see we can see the wear of the pin. It's normal wear. But it gets stuck because of the dirt and it's inside, all the debris of the transmission, the bad stuff, then the oil releases. So everything gets stuck in this pin and that's the reason why it doesn't move. So now we are going to replace the pin. We have the kit right here, but before that, we're going to do that. We're going to remove this. So to remove this, this is the mechanism in control. This is a gasket, put it aside. Uh, we have to remove two bolts only. We have to remove this one right here, and we have to remove this one. This one right here is just a spring load and tension for the gear selection. It's the one that determines the location of each uh, shifting, each position of the shifting, so it doesn't go back to neutral when you're driving. So for that, I think this one is 40 or 45. No, this one's 45. Yeah, this one is 45, I think 45, so we just remove this one. Once we remove it, we can easily pull this one out. This uh, this uh, bracket. The reason why we do it like this is so that way it doesn't damage the thread inside. Yeah, see there. So now we have no tension there. So we can completely remove the ball. There we have it. It's just a bracket. This one is nothing special, but it's very important. Remember to put it back. And then we have to remove this small bolt. I think this one is E8, I suppose. Yeah, is I E8. Nothing special about this ball. And there we have it. Very simple 10 millimeter ball, um, six millimeter thread. So 
Um, and then now then we have all this removed, we can easily remove the shifting, but in this case it's stuck, it doesn't move because the gasket, the gasket is uh, stopping it from moving. So we have to break the seal and then comes out there. And see, to remove it straight, it doesn't move out, doesn't get pulled out. So what you have to do is like do this to the left and then comes out. This is the mechanism that does the shifting, basically the lever that does the, uh, the selection of gears. So this one, it has nothing special, uh, nothing that can be missing or uh, Release from it. Oh, sorry, it's gonna fall. <laughs> um, Almirando. <laughs> uh, okay, so now we have the the whole uh, mechanism completely removed. In here, we have the whole situation all the shifting and everything the gears and everything so be sure to don't let anything go in if you have a ball or something on your hands make sure to don't have it because if it goes in your screw you're gonna have a big time big problem um dealing with situations like that so be sure to don't have anything of importance there um okay so this right here it's the part number of the repair kit for this uh, procedure. The kit is not that expensive, like a $100 to buy it. The process of doing this is the most expensive part, the labor of doing it, because you have to remove the transmission, disassemble the transmission, put it back, and then mount the transmission back in the, in the truck. So this is the expensive part. Um, well, so the kit, comes with different items. We have the two gaskets for the uh, mechanism and the TCU. Set crusher washers, these two are for the sensor right here. We have two crusher washers more and these are for the drain plugs. This one right here is for the um, filter, the transmission filter, which is this one right here on the back. All the way in the back, we have the transmission filter. That one right there. So this crusher washer right here is for that. And then of course we have the bushing, which is this one right here and the pin. So we're gonna open that because that's what we're gonna be using right now to continue the job. All right, the pushing in the pin, this pin is the updated pin. And the reason why it's like this is because it allows the free um, movement of the pin with the bushing. And it has these little cuts right here. So it can rotate and clean itself because this is gonna have vibration all the time. So that way the, the dirt will be completely cleared out. Um, it's a new design anyway, but to install this one is pretty easy. All you have to do, insert it with a flat surface, uh, flat surface right here in this position, like that. And then once you got that on place, what you do is stir this pin. And now, let me see if we have a flashlight somewhere. Oh yeah, right here. Okay. This one is bad, it doesn't work. <sighs> All right, so see right here, this is the rail, this part right here. 
does the rail then pushes the pin. So that is what pushes the pin out and the sensor pushes the pin in. Uh, and that's how the transmission determines the location of the gears, the position, and what gear number you are and all that. So that's the reason why we have the situation where this is stuck in one position and when the sensor gets to push, this one back doesn't move, it stays like this. And the transmission doesn't know the exact location, so keep on playing with the transmission movement here and there until finally the pins move to one position. But that's how uh, this works. Anyway, um, to install these right here, freeze and very important, we have to clean it. Uh, to clean this one, nothing special. Have a rack to clean the seating area of the gasket. It doesn't have to be extremely clean, but it has to be clean enough where there is no big debris or something that can interfere with the ceiling of the gasket and the metal plates. So now we have the gasket. The gasket has one position like this. and it's ready for installation. So to install this, it's pretty tricky. To install it, what we have to do is align these two, these three in this case, see this one moves and this one stays. So we have to align this with that part inside. You see that rack inside in here, go to the center right there, see? That one, the cutting is right in between that. That we, we have to align it and then insert it in the orifice that is right there. And that is how we are going to install it. It takes a little effort to do it, but you have to play around with it until it gets in. There is no way you're going to be able to misinstall this because it has one position. So if it's not installed properly, it's not going to get in. So we're going to remove the pin right now because it's easier to do it without the pin. So we have to play around with it until it goes in. A little hard sometimes. Sometimes it's easier than others. And if you are not sure then it's going well, you can always remove it again. There, see? All right. It is in now, see, sealing properly with no effort. So if it's not sealing properly, there is something wrong. Be sure to double check that. If, if you notice then it's not getting more than one specific position, get it out and inspect if everything is positioned correctly. But once we get that, out of the way, then we have this one positioned the way it's supposed to be. Remember to relocate the pin, very important. So now you see why it's easier to do it without the pin because the pin interferes with the movement. So insert the pin back, clean the area. Just going to install the new gasket. When I install the small, the smallest ball, which is this one right here. This one is a M6 ball, which means that the maximum torque you can apply to this one is 10 pounds of torque. Um, you cannot apply more than that. And plus, this is aluminum housing. The aluminum housing is very easy to strip. So a small ratchet will be able to do enough torque you need. 
like this, this is like a 10 pounds of torque. So this ball doesn't do much. This is just a secure ball to maintain this plate on, uh, on position. The real work is on these bigger bolts. So if you, even though in May, you may not have this ball on position, it still won't be a bigger deal, but it's better to have it. Then we are going to install the lock of the shifting, which is this one right here. To install this one, we have to do the same way as we remove it. Freeze, we install the ball with this one loose like this. See? See, this one moves freely. So now all we have to do is push it in. And then it is in. If you try to do it the other way, then trying to get this one on place and then putting the ball, you're probably going to strip the thread. So, for this, we're going to apply a torque of 25 pounds. I'm going to get the torque range. I'm going to do 25 on this one. Remember, you cannot over tie these balls because this is aluminum. This is a housing of aluminum. And if you do more than the torque than you're supposed to have, you are going to strip it. See, 25. It's enough for these balls and enough for the housing. So now then we have this in position. Double check because now we're gonna install the T uh, CU. Um, make sure that there is nothing in between. All the bolts are installed. The pin move freely. It has to move freely. If it doesn't move freely, that means that there is something wrong there. And if everything is correctly, we can install the gasket. Just one position for this gasket. You cannot put it backwards. There is no other position. Just one position. And there we have it. Should be is, is, is easily to uh, sit on the on the housing, so nothing complicated. Now it's time to install the TCU. Um, I have permission. All right. <coughs> Here is the TCU, so all we have to do right here is clean the surface as well. Be sure that there is no dangerous debris inside the area. Nothing crazy. So we do, we have all that. We are ready for installation. This right here, this pin right here is this one right here. This is the mechanism that moves it left and right. And this one right here is this one right here. This is the other mechanism to move can move left and right. I mean, front and back or whatever location that is. So we have the motors right here and everything. So if you have any problems with the gear now getting into position or something, and the pin is being replaced, probably you have problems with the whole TCU, the unit completely. So that could be a different repair, different video that I can do. Now to install this one. Be sure that these two lines are out of the way because you can crush them. And then it sits like that. See, I'm gonna do it again. See those lines right here? Push them. See, like this. And then see this one on top, like that. And it sits right there. And that's all you have to do. See, it's sitting there. I'm not holding it. It should be able to sit. If it's not sitting, that means there is something wrong. There is something that wasn't done properly. There's something that is not, not letting that sit in there. Uh, we're gonna grab one ball because we're gonna need one ball to hold it in position. It doesn't matter the location of the bolt. You can grab it from any place. It's the same ball. So we have to push it by hand. Be sure that the hoses right here, see, are not 
in the way. If they're, they have to be free. If you see them, then they are somewhere in here, move them out of the way. So, see, push by hand, and holding it one hand, you have to be sitting correctly. No much effort at all. So now, insert the bolt. We're gonna use the impact gun so that way we do this a little faster. All right. There's one bolt holding it, and now we have to install the rest of them. We're gonna use the impact gun to get them close to the housing, and then we're gonna use the torque wrench to torque them to to uh, twenty five pounds. That's all, the whole seating, double check everything. Be sure around and there is nothing under the module. If something, we have to remove it again. But be sure that there is nothing that is being crushed by it. And if we are okay with that, we can continue on uh, doing the torque procedure. Now do 25, sometimes you're gonna feel that 25 is too much. So if you feel then the ball is stripping because we have aluminum housing, don't do more. Just leave it the way it is. So in this case, 25 is this, so it's working fine. Okay, now I will check all of them. All right. So that's it. These are completely tight now. And uh, now we are just going to put everything back the way it was. So we're going to start by installing the airlines right here by hand. Don't use a tool right here. Start them by hand. And then when you are about to tie them, you can uh, use the Grinch. So now this one's tight. Don't tighten too much. See, that should be enough. That's like a 15, 20 pounds. That would be enough. Then this one goes in the same way as the other one.
it should be easy to thread this one in. And if you feel that it's getting stuck in position, um, remove it again and see what's going on. Because if you damage the thread, it's going to be a big problem. Now it's tight. So we're gonna continue installing the sensor. Uh, we have the two crusher watches right here, but we install the new ones. And um, right here, be sure to remove two because if you install the new one on top of the other one like this, because it happens because sometimes they're stuck in there. Um, you know, you're probably gonna have leaks in here. It's pretty easy anyway to fix this because it's pretty accessible from under the truck, but still you don't wanna do uh, extra work. The same crusher washer for the rain plug. See, if you're gonna use the, the crusher washer for the rain plug, it, it, won't, it won't fit, so be sure to double check that it's bigger. So these are the ones for the sensor. They're smaller. See they fit properly. So like this. And then the other one here. And it has a guide. See this little guy thing it has. It goes for the sensor right here. So it has the bracket right here. See it holds right here. So there is no way you're gonna install it the wrong way. It only has one position. So you tie this one up. Don't use the full force on this one because it can break. All right, that's enough. And we're gonna reinstall the sensor. Pretty easy, insert it. See, insert the sensor like this. And once you have it in this position, you're gonna press the tab like that. And then it's secure. So relocating the harness is just two plugs. And when I work this one out, so it's easy to install it. When I remove, see the dust. Has a lot of dust in it. So that way it's easier installation. You can always use W42. Yeah, it should be enough. Move it in freely. Be sure to do that so that way you have an easy installation. So you gotta be in this position, insert it. If it doesn't go through, for any reason, for any reason, these pins right here, don't let the, the plug go in. You have to double check the tabs in here, the brown tabs. They have to align with the white ones. And if they're not aligned, you have to align them manually. In this case, they are, so, see? Gotta sit like this, and then when you have it in this position, play with it like this until it locks like that. And sitting properly, there is no gap. This one has to be closed, and it doesn't have to move. And now, this is the close up federal plug. We are going to do the same thing, side like that. But in this case, we are going to replace the actuator, so we're gonna leave it open. So that way it's easier for um, to remove it right now. And the rest thing, the, the rest of the uh, things to do is to install the hardness back the way it was with the zip ties all over the place. And that's a pretty easy thing to do. 
you don't need that much explanation to do that. So just remember to inspect the harness before. If you see any damage on the harness, if you see anything, because you know these are components that are exposed to vibration, wind, turbulence, and whatever. So the vibration could damage, or the movement could damage the the harness all the time. So you have to double check that. If you see anything, now it is time to fix it. Once it is on top, well mounted on the truck, it's not very easy to do it. So just double check that. And if everything is looks correctly, we are done with the job. So this is the whole process of removing the split paint on this digital wow. transmission. Of course, here, I am not showing you the process of removing the transmission. The process of uh, getting the transmission of the sh of the sh uh, chassis and any other uh, steps that you have to do to get the transmission right as it is right now. But um, just remember that. And if you ever want to do this yourself, you have to think about on how to remove the transmission freeze because there is no way you want to be able to do this in the frame. So. Um, well, uh, I don't know if this solved many of your doubts, but if you have any questions, just be sure to comment. Um, I have a different video showing different steps, telling you different reasons why you have to replace the DT12 uh, split pin. Uh, and if you have more information about it, I have a different video showing that. And I have different videos too explaining different problems with DT12. In this case, I decided to do this video so you can see step by step on how it's like to remove the split pin. So if you have the ability to do it yourself, or if you are a mechanic and you don't know how to do it, here you have the answer on how it's like to remove the split pin. Um, remember then this, usually if you have any problems with the split pin, there is no fault codes related to that. So you won't get any type of check, check engine light, you won't get any type of messages, or you're gonna get the transmission malfunction between gears. You will not get a transmission doesn't go into gear or something. Um, and that will be pretty much it. To know, then you have to replace this one. If you have any fault codes related to split pin or something like that, probably you are not having problems with the split pin itself. You're having problems with the sensors, the mechanism that control the split pin, and that will be the whole TCU, which is this one. And uh, that will be a different repair. Uh, easier repair at some point, because only replacing this one but it still will be a different repair. So you, if for any reason you have cuts related to split pin, like for example, split pin circuit open, something like that, and you replace the split pin, that one, the one you just replaced, and you install the transmission bag and everything, and you have the same fault cuts, of course, you will have to remove the transmission again to remove this component. So just double check that, pay attention to those uh, little details so that way you don't do extra work and you don't get to, uh, uh, have uh, more headache than whatever you have with the problems than you already having with these transmissions signs. They are very complicated and little, and little by little they're getting more complicated um, because uh, they are not um, giving you a way how to service these transmissions. Nowadays, the newer transmissions are mostly like um, one-time use transmissions. So as soon as they break, you have to replace the whole transmission and get a new one. And uh, that's how they are doing things now. So that's the reason why it's very hard to run these transmissions. But whatever we can to help you on the journey on owning an automatic transmission with the uh, Freelander Cascadia without transmission, especially DT12, we're gonna help you out on showing you details, videos, faults, and everything else that you need to know to keep your truck on the road. And as always, I mean, if you have any questions, comment below. You want to support my channel, subscribe to the channel, it's very important. In Instagram, you can follow me as Francisco Maya YouTube. Um, any type of questions, anything add, I will get to you by uh, by order. You know, I have so many questions, so many uh, type of uh, recommendations or uh, doubts and people have. So I get to them little by little, I have too many. So if I don't get to you, eventually I will get to you. Uh, but uh, well, that's all I can say. So, uh, well, um, if you want to do, you want me to do more videos like this, step by step, 
live videos or just regular videos. But in some cases, I, I prefer live videos so that way you can see on motion, so that way you don't see any cuts or any mistakes or anything. Everything is one video. That way you can see the common mistakes we can make by doing this job, so that way you prevent it. You can uh, comment below. Let me know if you want me to do more live videos like this. So I hope you like it. Thank you for watching.